Hello ladies and gentlemen, Marauder X here with uh, something different, something new. So there was some discussion in one of my live streams about specifically Mighty Number no. 9 and uh, crowdfunding games in general. And there was a lot of lot of negativity that happened with the the Mighty Number no. 9 release. A lot of negativity, and I, I shared in it. I was really not impressed with the game's release. I was really not impressed by the game itself. Uh, I do feel kind of sorry for the people who backed it that spent more money than the people who could get it afterwards. It's like, that's the... That's the, the the problem with crowdfunding. That's it's a double-edged sword. You get games, but you're also getting Rudy, to spend money <laughs> uh, on a product that doesn't necessarily exist yet. Rather than you know, say like the normal pre-order of just you know, get, getting a game that doesn't exist yet, but you know it's coming out because it already has a retail skew. But there's... yeah. That's... There's a lot to it, and I don't... I don't know how to, to describe it or discuss it without coming across as sounding, you know, exceptionally negative. But... Like I said, I, I backed the Mighty Number no. 9 Kickstarter originally. I, I did. I was one of the the early backers for it, and right before the project came out of uh, its kickstarting goal, I canceled my my backing for it because there was just a lot going on that I did not feel 100% comfortable with. Mostly, it was the the frequency of the Kickstarter follow-ups. Uh, there was a lot of, hey, we're doing another Kickstarter to add voice acting, we're doing another Kickstarting to add, you know, this, or that, or the other, or all sorts of stuff, and there was... There, there were some things that I'm, I just, I sat there and I, I... I just felt uneasy about, so I cancelled it. And, in the grand scheme of things, I'm kind of glad I did, given, you know, the reception that the game got. Not to say that it, you know, is a bad game, it's just not what... It didn't live up to the expectations that people had. And you can say that that's, you know, a problem with the fans, but you could also say that it's a problem with the development, because the things that were shown early on were not what was released. And you can say, well, you know, things change in development, and yes, they do. But when you get that much money and things decrease to that extent, right on that's that's not a good development cycle. That's that's a very cautionary experience that people should be very weary of. And that's I think it, what's happening with Kickstarter now. I always felt there was going to be a time where a a particular Kickstarter was going to. Uh, um, cause people to lose faith in crowdfunding as a whole. And <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be Mighty Number no. 9. Honestly, I was expecting something like Star, Star Citizen. Something that has so much more at stake. Star Citizen has so much more money behind it that a failure on that caliber would have caused innumerable issues <laughs> in terms of uh, trusting uh, the crowdfunding style. So... Uh, I kind of disappointed that you know Mighty Number no. Nine happened to be the one that, to do that. And whoop! I was hoping that I was attacking the right way, but no. And so I want to show off some games that I'm actually really excited for. And this is one of them. Uh, I backed uh, this project, and this one wasn't even Kickstarter. This was Indiegogo, which has even more of a a, a cautionary, you should probably not be involved in this type vibe, because it's just not as... I, I guess not seen as reputable, but it's it's a thing. But I mean, the company that developed this uh, developed Skullgirls, so they have an interesting pedigree 
and I I feel I, I feel the same way that a lot of people felt with Keiji Mifune. I, I guarantee you, everyone looked at him and was like, "Oh, well, he worked on Mega Man. He he knows what he's doing." So there's no reason to doubt this project is going to do terribly. But I think the warning signs for that project were a little different, given the you know the the need to have so many different Kickstarters. But let's let's talk about some good things about crowdfunding. It gets you games that you normally would not be able to get otherwise. So many kickstarted games have come out that I've really been a fan of. Like Undertale was kickstarted. That was and that was basically described as like the best game of the year, just hands down. So there, there are some really good Kickstarter projects. I'm hoping this one turns out well as well, because this looks this like an amazingly gorgeous game. No and if it plays anything like this demo in the, the, the final build of the game, then it's going to be well worth the investment. Look out below. So it's, it's all about risk and rewards. Do you want to take the risk to, you know, support a developer that you trust to give them your money right off the bat without having to have any sort of, you know, developed product? Or what about this? This is the demo that came out before the project even got off the ground. So, that's... I, I don't want people to think that Kickstarter, like, there, there's so many instances of, oh, you shouldn't trust Kickstarter because Kickstarter is basically the same as, you know, pre-ordering, and no one wants to pre-order because you, you get nothing good from it. And it's just you're giving your devel giving the developers a interest-free loan. It's like, well, kind of, yeah, but otherwise we wouldn't get the game. And this is... This is a game I'm already in love with. The art style is just amazing. The gameplay is... It, it's its what I wanted for a new uh, uh, Valkyrie Profile game, but even a, a different, you know... Different mythology, even. So... But I know a lot of people are like, I was a little harsh on... Uh, my my words of mighty number no. nine, but it's 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 because of expectations, and that's really the the long and short of it. It's like if you have expectations for a game, then it it's very rarely that it's going to live up to those expectations. You're going to build a narrative in your head of what it's what you want it to be, what you expect it to be, and when it doesn't live up to that, then you're you're gonna lash out, and that's I think what a lot of people did with Mighty Number no. Nine. And I think part of it is Mighty Number no. Nine didn't live up to the expectation. I don't think it could have lived up to the expectations, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. But it's disappointing that it couldn't live up to its expectations like that, no matter what came out from it. But it's it's a it's a unique and quite obnoxious situation to be in. Honestly, I, I do not I do not envy the game designers that have to deal with the the BS that <laughs> gets thrown at them. But at the same time, you know. I also feel for the consumers. But I figured I'd show off two projects that I'm, I'm ex extremely excited for, and this is the first one, uh, Indivisible. Like I said, people who developed Skullgirls doing a, you know, Southeast Asian-inspired uh, RPG done in the style of Valkyrie Profile. Lots of unique enemies, lots of creepy enemies. 
Uh, a very interesting and unique battle mechanic in terms of uh, how, you know, combat and combos work. It's a very reminiscent of Valkyrie profile. So, I mean, there's a lot to this game that's like, this is... It's starting off as a good theory. And, like I said, I just hope it, it follows the theory when we get the final game. That's what I'm, I'm hoping. But, like I said, I said, you know, I had negative impression of, of Mighty Number no. 9. Doesn't mean, you know, I have a negative impression of all Kickstarters. It doesn't mean I'm gonna sit here and say, well, you know, this is what all Kickstarter backers deserve. You know, throwing their money away needlessly. No, I, I'm fully gonna continue backing Kickstarter projects in the future. I encourage people to do the same. And, uh... Yeah, I'm... I, I'm gonna be a little more cautious about what I... I back in the future, but I think that's something that everyone should... should have paid attention to from the, the beginning. Just don't go into it blind expecting something specific or something that you have a set series of expectations for. So... Just, you know, keep your expectations a little more realistic and, uh... Don't think that, uh... If it doesn't quite live up to your expectations that it is a failure. So... I'm getting completely trashed by this guy. So let's beat the crap out of him, shall we? And I'm probably going to die, but... And damage, damage, damage. Yay, more damage. And let's do some serious damage to him with an axe to the face. Lions and tigers. But I, like I said, I really hope that uh, everyone learns that just because, you know, one Kickstarter project didn't live up to the expectations that you had doesn't mean they're all terrible. Doesn't mean that, you know... Everything is going to be bad, and even if you know Mighty Number no. Nine didn't live up to your expectations, there there are reports that it's you know now that several of the bugs have been you know tweaked out that it's not a bad game. It's just not the game that people were you know I guess hoping for. And you know to be completely honest, it's probably not a game I would pick up. Like I love the original Mega Man games. I've played several of them here on my channel, but. I, I, I don't see the need to deal with things like, uh, you know, a score system for a platformer. I, I've, I've passed that point where I, I care about score. I want, you know, interesting platforming mechanics, and I don't care about, you know, getting into a, a, a system where I have to have a, you know, the, the, the high score or things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not... That, that's not my style of gameplay, but I... That's just it. That's not my style of gameplay. There may be others that thoroughly enjoy that style of, of gameplay, and as such, you know, more power to them. I, I really hope they enjoy it. I hope... They, they got as much enjoyment out of Mighty Number no. 9 as they could. And, yeah, that's that's really it. I can't really say too much else about it other than I... Yeah, I that's that's really it. So, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Uh, I really hope, if you hadn't heard of Indivisible before, that you check it out. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic project. Uh, very different. And... Uh, if you are going to check it out, uh, you can check out their, their stuff. And like I said, they did Skullgirls, so they already have another 
game that you could, you know, kind of compare what their their style of uh, development looks like, if it's something you look like you could get in, into, something you could enjoy, or, uh, you know, if uh, the, the style of gameplay is very different, it's a fighting game versus an RPG, but you can see the type of polish that they put on their projects, get an idea of, okay, this is not, you know, a first-time project, and, uh, you know, get a feel for what type of uh, quality they aim for. So, I know not every Kickstarter project can do that, but this one they can. I really hope if you like RPGs, if you like fans, of, if you're a fan of, you know, interesting mythology, a uh, fan of Valkyrie Profile, I'm, it's, I'm just going to keep drawing uh, comparisons to that. Uh, seriously, go check out Indivisible. It's a fantastic RPG, and I will do, like I said, I'll do another game on another Kickstarter-based project, and, uh, you know, go from there. So, till then, later, everyone.